Hey, I'm Zach Miller, Quality Lab Technician here at Victory Brewing Company. Welcome back to Victory Presents. Today we're going to talk about something that doesn't get discussed a whole lot in the craft brewing industry, and that's quality assurance. This is our tasting room. So what we do when we qualitatively assess a beer, put it through our sensory panel, they're going to sit down, they're going to be handed a beer, and we can control a lot of the environment in here. So really what that leaves the brewer with is their sense of touch, their sense of taste, and their sense of smell. Those are all three very important when qualitatively assessing a beer. From year to year, our ingredients will vary, and that's because we buy artisan ingredients from across the globe. Whether we're getting different levels of modification in our malt, we're getting different alpha acid contents in our hops, which will impact bitterness and flavor components, uh, it all varies from year to year, and our job in quality assurance is to make sure that those differences are blended out appropriately and we get a consistent product from brew to brew. When we look at a beer, we're looking at several numerical values that can tell us how it holds up uh, in terms of consistency to other products we have brewed. We're looking at IBUs, international bittering units. That is a measured value uh, for bitterness. We're looking at color in the SRM scale. Uh, another measured value that we can that we can take at to measure consistency. But what we're looking at in this room specifically is how everything blends together into the final product. You can have all the numbers you want, but it's not going to tell you how bitter a beer tastes uh, when it's balanced out with residual malt sweetness. Qualitative assessment is a lot more subjective and based upon the individual taster. When I taste a beer and I think it's excessively bitter, the next guy might not think it's excessively bitter, he might think it's pleasantly bitter. Well, IBU might be 70 for this particular beer. So this is Summer Love, uh, going to be packaged very soon. And we want to make sure that, you know, this beer hasn't been out in a year. We want to make sure that it'll uh, be the same as last year. So looking at it right now, you know, giving it a quick assessment of color, clarity. This is unfiltered beer, but uh, it would always help to take a look at the, at the uh, clarity ahead of time to see how easy it will be to filter. You know, it looks nice and hazy, but uh, certainly drinkable. Give it a little smell and a little swig. Uh, that's good stuff. So once the beer is completed fermentation, we'll want to grab these samples. Uh, typically we grab them a couple days before they are scheduled to be packaged. Uh, we'll grab them before they hit the filter and we'll grab them after the filter and assess quality at both ends. And when we taste, we taste things that remind us of experiences we've had in the past. So when we smell a nice super piney double IPA, we're pulling from experiences where, say, maybe we've gone on a hike a couple years ago and really enjoyed the aromas from that hike. Uh, there, of course, is no pine in a double IPA, uh, but we are able to make those connections. The olfactory part of the brain is actually located right next to where your memories are stored, so perhaps that is why we make those connections. We'll have the brewers come in here. You want the brewer to be able to feel the beer in his mouth. Feel the mouthfeel. Is it thick and oily or is it thin and dry? And then, he, then he'll be able to smell the beer. Does it smell hoppy? Does it smell malty? Or is it a good balance of both? Taste and smell are, are tied together. You can't have taste without smell. So we're looking for a lot of the same things uh, in terms of determining how a beer tastes as to how it smells. We include all brewers, but the senior brewers are expected to show up because they've been around the beer the longest. They've developed the most experience with the beer. I keep touching on experience for a reason. They've developed the most experience with the beer. They know what to expect every time, and that is how we make sure that we're putting out the most consistent product possible. So, you know, these are the first two tasters of the day, but uh, the notes are looking pretty good. Touched on everything we wanted to see here. So we have a set of metrics as set forth by our brewmaster, Ron. That's what we want to see in every single style of beer. For instance, our Summer Love, which we tasted here today. There's a very big citrus component, which we want commented upon. Is it too citrusy? Is it not citrusy enough? What have you. Uh, so we only have two of our uh, tasters in today but the notes are looking pretty good. Uh, they hit on everything we wanted to talk about. Pleasant dry bitterness, toasty malt, 
uh, citrusy aroma and flavor, everything's looking pretty good. So we've already run the numbers on this beer. You know, we've hit IBUs, we've hit our color specification, we've hit alcohol. Uh, but really the most important thing that we've learned today as a quality assurance team is that this beer tastes like summer love. And that is why qualitative assessment is paramount when it comes to our quality assurance. So we have a red light in our tasting room. Uh, the reason why is it makes the color of the beer a little bit harder to distinguish. So if we ever wanted to do a blind tasting or uh, a tasting quiz to make sure everybody's familiar with the beers, we'd flip that red light on and it would make just a little bit harder to determine the color of a beer and give away an indicator uh, as to what the style or uh, brand of beer could be.